Good to see everybody this evening. Please take your Bibles and turn with me to Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. To spend a little bit of time this evening thinking with you about this uh, portion of God's Word. And uh, I'd like to conclude this evening some of the things that we've been thinking about uh, with respect to how to draw encouragement in a day where there's an awful lot of discouragement. And uh, <clears throat> before you uh, get there, as you're turning, I thought I'd uh, make my attempt to give you a few more things you can laugh at, maybe. You'll be happy to know I forgot my list, so some of you will be spared the, uh, the agonizing <laughs> recital of dad jokes. But this one, I think, is, uh, I like it, so that doesn't mean it's good, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. So... Uh, these two friends were talking, and he looked at uh, his friend and said, Do you know why elephants paint their toenails cherry red? He said, No, I really don't. He said, Well, that's when they climb up in the cherry trees, they can't be seen. <laughs> and, and his friend looked at him and says, I've never seen an elephant in a cherry tree. And he replied, See, it works. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well. <clears throat> Now, if you happen to be a pessimist, I can tell you what your blood type is. <laughs> be negative. <laughs> Sorry. Good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little laughter helps, I think, sometimes. All right, let's get on task here, and uh, let's look at something that's meaty and won't leave us. <laughs> Lamentations chapter 3. And uh, we'll start at verse 22. Though the Lord's mercies, or through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I'd like to read this in a little different translation. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. This is a uh, word uh, that is a covenant word, this word mercy. And uh, uh, many of us have been refreshed by the reality that uh, this is the uh, great uh, emphasis upon God's uh, tremendous love for us. Um, really, it cannot be measured. And as we, we consider the love and the loyalty that the Lord has given us as a gift, um, we, can, we can step back a little bit and we can understand that uh, as we think uh, about His compassion uh, and we think about the reality that He deals with us as, as with His own children, uh, in the sense of encouragement, compassion, um, the, the, the proper type of sympathies, uh, empathy uh, in many cases, um, and, and he is leading us to put our confidence in what he is, who he is, and not so much in what we think we are uh, in ourselves. We understand these things. I realize these are things that uh, we, we think about and are reminded from time to time. But I was thinking about how is it in a practical way that God demonstrates that love to us? And uh, I was just jotting some thoughts down. And I thought if you think about it and you go through the word of God, there's are, there are tremendous ways in which God encourages us. And... Uh, Great may the battle be that we're in, uh, sometimes our emotions, uh, our mental state, our, our ability to just do anything is, is, uh, is under attack, and uh, it just seems like we're at the moment of expiring. And God has given us what we need, and uh, they are His mercies, they're new every morning, He is faithful. But then I came across these passages of God's word with respect to encouragement. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, I'm going to read these for you. If you'd like to jot them down, um, I'll, I'll try to repeat them. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, 
just as in fact you are doing. So as you look at God's word and you think about the reality of people moving in and out of your life, fellow believers, and you think about the encouragement of the Lord and you think about how does God practically send encouragement, one of his, uh, one of his wonderful works for us is the body of Christ, fellow believers. And we say that and we also accept the reality and, and the, uh, the responsibility that there are times, obviously, in, in and among ourselves where there's, there's conflict. It's not easy. There are issues that are difficult for us to learn to work through. And um, encouragement can be seen in two avenues. Encouragement can be seen in genuinely coming alongside someone and uh, uh, pointing them in a positive way forward, saying an encouraging word or doing something for them in a uh, very, very meaningful way. Uh, encouragement can also mean pulling alongside someone in a time of need where they're really dumped or depressed or hurting spiritually. Um, are needing uh, maybe some help and being able to work through some difficult issues in their lives. Um, I, I want to say that sometimes the, uh, correction is a beautiful form of God's encouragement if it's done God's way. I often think of the way in which the Lord responded to many that uh, we're in need of being corrected. I'm just, it's just to me worth the time. Sometimes uh, I'd like to come back and look at that a little bit more in depth. But the way in which he responded to different individuals obviously was according to he knew their need, he knew who they were, he knew the circum <clears throat> pardon me, their circumstances that they were in. But he always moved with the end in mind. He always desired the best not just what was something that he could unload on <clears throat> and level somebody with. He always sought to do what he said with an end view of profitability for that person. And uh, he was, he, was uh, he didn't have to be careful. He displayed tremendous care in how he expressed what he expressed. The reason I say that is, is because this is one of the primary ways that we can find encouragement today is to, to learn that some of the greatest blessing and the greatest benefit of God's work in our local midst is to value each other as the Lord does. And to understand that we've been given an opportunity to be an encouragement. And I think about that on a personal level. Um, and I think of it in terms of how am I being an encouragement to someone. And I think about that in a practical way. I think about it in a way, all right, match up what I think are my skills or abilities. And look at their situation and think about it. Pray about it. And, and then if... If that's something I have a sense of peace about, then I pray for the Lord to open a door or maybe I can go up and offer something or just in some way show a genuine concern and move into their, their world. Um, and there's times to call things for what they are, but there's never a time to level at one another something that would be disheartening or discouraging to the point where there is uh, an obvious sense of a, a very harsh and very critical spirit. Now some, somebody maybe is thinking, oh, did you hear something here? No. What I want to encourage is, is that the Lord values in our lives the understanding that we each belong to him. We're his. And if I could just be putting myself in the personal place of it, I, I find more liberty and more peace when I see you, and I'm speaking the collective you, 
as I think about how valuable you are to the Lord. That becomes part of the thing that I, I ask the Lord, Lord, help me to see the people that you love in the same manner that you do. I can't like he does in perfection, but I can strive in my heart to think in terms of how much he values the body of Christ. Now, I'm saying that within the relative sense, we don't want to put anybody above the Lord and we don't want to make this a, uh, uh, an issue that goes to the ridiculous end, but to reinforce the, the atmosphere of the body of Christ by encouraging one another and building each other up. And I would say this, I, I think I can say this, the Lord knows, uh, I sense it, just in fact as you are doing. And I'd like to pause for a moment and just uh, just stay, say what's on my mind, I hope, in a, an encouraging way. But there's a sweetness in this group that is very evident to me. Now you're going, oh, <laughs> well, pray tell. I'd like to know more of what you see. I can remember through experience um, times in which there were frustrations in the idea of, uh, well, are we really being and doing what we think the Lord wants us to do? Are, are we growing? Are we, well, um, that, that's, a, that's a, I think, an honest question. I wouldn't uh, ask not to address that. However, I would say that one of the key blessings of the Lord is, is that it's his work in our midst that's critical. His work in our midst is the critical part of a growing a meeting. And the reason I say that, and you know this, you know this, but when people come in that maybe the Lord brings along, and some come and they stay for a while, and then they move on. Um, we have to bear in mind, we are living in a culture that does not understand the difference between feeling good and finding the Lord to be their portion. And I say that because that's exactly what's in the text here. We read the next verse of verse 24. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him. Okay? The Lord is my portion. So I, what I want to say in this simple, simple way is, is that I'd like to encourage you. And please take it for what it's worth. Just at face value, I'd like to encourage you. There is something very evident that God has done here among you guys that is noticeable and it's good. And I like to just simply say that that is the mark of growth because when the body pulls together as the Lord knits us together, that is what really does the work in the long haul. And what it does, and I just, I don't know how else to express it, we want to minister to anybody that the Lord brings here. We, we, would, we would desire that and hunger, but as we grow and we we respond to the Lord in different ways. We recognize that it is that he is drawing us to himself. And as long as our hearts are drawn to him and we understand how valuable he is to us, that regardless of what, what we consider to be success or not, that is the testimony of the Lord in our midst. And then that's his responsibility to allow that to be ministered to people that come through. But we want to be good, good, I, I don't know how else, I don't, I don't want to use a mechanical term because we're not pieces of metal, conduits, but rather we are, we are items in which really the, the, the fame of the, of the Lord can shine out of our lives just by who we, he's made us to be and what we've come through and what we have been able to see the Lord give us victory. And so I think about that. Here's another one that was uh, very um, 
this, this, this stands out. Therefore, my, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. The other one was 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. This one is uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So the, the right care and the right sense of this aspect of which uh, the Lord encourages us with is his loyal love is the same thing that we in turn learn and give back to the body of Christ to give loyal love. <clears throat> this is part of who he is. This reveals him. Am I uh, wanting to say that there isn't the need for good teaching? No, I wouldn't dare say that. Is there no need for good gospel preaching? No, there's a need for that. All of those things are important. But the real work of the body of Christ is the unity that the Lord has called us to in himself. It's that knitting. It's that pulling together and appreciating whether we understand things or not the, the work that God is doing in somebody else's life. I, I think I've said this before. I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. And, it, and please don't misunderstand. There's, there's a time to carefully assess things, but it doesn't take a rocket science to find faults. Okay. Yeah, whoopee, big deal. So we find faults. Hmm. We're all pretty good at that. Do we find ways from the Lord to be a true bro, true sister, in the love and loyalty of God to move close to people? encourage them and build them up. So, I, I think obviously Hebrews chapter 10 is a hallmark. Some of you are like, yeah, I knew you were going to quote that one. And let us consider how we may, this is a little bit of a different translation, let us consider how we may spur. Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't look at that word. I think a spur, and I think a spur is on a boot and get <laughs> up, you know, and woo, off the horse. Well, I don't, I, I, I think there's a little bit more of a idea that we might be able to, in a positive way, uh, propel someone in the right direction. Have you ever considered yourself, and I say this, and I know, no, I haven't, and I don't, I'm not sure that's applicable. I want to be real careful here, but I think one of the greatest joys in life is seeking to make other people successful at what they are able to do, not flattering them in something that they are not able to do. But to genuinely invest in somebody's life and the joy of seeing them move forward. And I think that those are, those are elements of spiritual growth that as the Lord is building, and I see that. I see that here. And I want to encourage you with that. Sometimes it's easy to get discouraged, isn't it? And I don't say that that. Uh, I don't sense you're discouraged. I just, I just think we're a, we're a body of Christ that is enjoying some of the sweetness of what the Lord has for us as we learn to knit together. And, and you know, I'm going to say this, but I, I just, it's my old hobby horse, and I'll be as quick to get off as if I possibly can. But remember, wherever you go, there you are. And I've learned whatever I didn't deal with wherever I am, 
I have found that wherever I go, there I am, and the issue is still the same. I need to deal with what I couldn't deal with here or there or somewhere else. And that the real peace, the real confidence is letting the Lord show you that he can bring about tremendous benefit and blessing as we dig in and again, thank you Jim for praying, but recalibrate our thinking let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. That's Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Now, this will seem a little bit, maybe not in context, but it just seemed to fit uh, with respect to finding encouragement in a day when there's just, there's, uh, it's easy to become discouraged. And we put our eyes where they need to be. We are, we are in tremendous, tremendous blessing in the Lord. This one is John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. Don't you like that? It's like the Lord is sitting down just visiting with us and saying, it's going to get tough. It's going to be troubles. Take heart. Why? I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. In me, you are overcomers. In me, you are overcomers. And it's not that we go out and tackle the world. It's that we allow the confidence of Christ's care and the fact that he is just asking us to keep our eyes on him. Take off the time limits. Take off the condition limits. Take off whatever the, the restraints that we have put on it and say, Lord, you're, you're really in control and I want to I want to yield to your control. And that that touches not just what is God's will for my life, but it it touches touching one another in, in the body of Christ with our, our fellowship, our encouragement, um, reaching other people and, and letting letting the Lord move through us so that those that have Issues and needs can sense that they are cared for genuinely by the Lord. Um, I, I, yeah, okay, so, um, and please understand, if God orders something, he's going to get it done. that we might think goes into making something wonderful can be effective if God has instigated it. God has commanded it and we are willing to follow him. But if we try to, to manufacture what we really cannot, we're asking for trouble. We're asking for frustration and discouragement. And I just want to say that it's the Lord in our midst, and it's the acknowledgement of him in our midst. It's not listening to other voices that run contrary to the voice of the Lord when he says, let us consider one another how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some is in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. It's just too easy to be a naysayer. It's too easy to get on the bandwagon. <laughs> Pardon my expression, but but it's so much more free. It's so much more meaningful to to say, Lord, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let go of that kind of thinking, and I wanna I wanna think the way you think about this. And then um, I like I like. The encouragement that the Lord gives us. Now, you know, you you could uh, you could try to sit back and analyze this from from many different areas, 
But um, this is going to be, and that one, that last verse, have I told you these things? I have told you these things that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And that's John 16, 33. The next one is Luke 12, 6 through 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Um, maybe on the first reading that doesn't grip us a little. And, and, and yet... There's a tremendous amount of, of uh, communication by the Lord to each of us. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, areas that I, I think about a lot is uh, this term that uh, he hasn't forgotten one of them. Now, you, you and I, I see a sparrow and, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful for creation. I don't, <laughs> it's a sparrow. Maybe I'm drilling too hard here. I, I don't want to make more of this than the Spirit of God wants. But what is he saying? He says, I, don't, I even noticed the little sparrow. Sometimes it's the attention of God to the little things that just blows me away. And I say that is probably not the best term to put. But it just captures my heart. It captures my thinking. If you ever thought, I'm just a little sparrow. I'm not really much in the big picture of things. Please, let God liberate you from that thought. If, if, if not one of them is forgotten by God, he's, he, he's going to tell you, you're worth more than many sparrows. He's already qualified in a sense detail to the smallest of his creation. To me, uh, and this is, uh, this is part of the way I think, but I believe there's benefit in this. If, if that's how the Lord feels about the little sparrow, and then he says, you are worth more than many sparrows, I begin to realize as I look at you, I'm looking at the king's children. Does that matter? It does matter. I'm not saying this because I, I, I'm trying to chastise. I, I want to encourage. It's not that I think that's absent here. I think it's here. I want to. I want to be a cheerleader on the side. <clears throat> Hang in. Do not give up. And not that I think you are. I just want to encourage you. <clears throat> He's on your side. Sometimes we need these little moments where we can quiet our souls and bring ourselves back into reality. Yeah, yeah, whoa, wait a second. He is here. He is very real. He's very much in tune with each of us. I know that uh, for some of you, this, this, is, this is very clear in your heart and mind, and I'm so thankful that it is. But I find more and more these days as I visit with people that are struggling spiritually, some of these concepts, they're not even aware of them. They don't pull these things in. Sometimes it's easy for us. Sometimes if we get hammered and blindsided by life sometimes. And it's easy to get caught up in the moment and how kind the Lord is to bring us back. Quieted and still and blessed. Um, so that's Luke 12, 6 through 7. 
And the last one I wanted to look at here is <clears throat> Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a person. Um, there are people in my life that God has brought alongside that have been to me an example of this in a very powerful way. And when you know somebody's vested in your well-being, I mean, it's no kidding. I mean, putting all things aside. And it's not like we have to go out and manufacture this and make it an emotional thing or anything else. It's just simply saying, by life, by commitment, by attitude, you are so valuable before the Lord, and I want you to know I see that as a prize in you from the Lord. Prepared for by Him. I treat you with the reality that you're the King's child. Um, that kind of love is a love that will be open to the honest evaluations. Um, now, sometimes that love is given and others don't realize that's what's being done. It's easy to, it's easy to look at somebody that has a real care for your soul that uh, they love you, but uh, when they say things, um, they, they, you, you, you and I maybe tend to think, well, wow, wow where did they come from on that one? And yet, um, as, as it's been given to me by several others, um, take everything anybody says to you and weigh it. And uh, with the breath of God's love, God's mindset, blow on that thing and the, blow the chaff away. The chaff is the worthless stuff. And whatever remains that is of truth, whatever is valuable according to the principle of the word of God, regardless of, of what may have been said to you, and, it's so much better if they come in the right spirit, but sometimes that doesn't always happen. And so we tend to go, eh, negative, that's not going to work. I don't have to listen to you now because you didn't come in the right spirit. <laughs> mm. um, as we look at the word, haven't you been impressed? With, with sometimes the characters that God has used to communicate tremendous things. I have. And it's, it's not condoning what they did. And it's not necessarily saying that's the pattern. In, in, a, in a principled way, that's totally opposite. But still, they, they communicated a vital message. And the, the wise one picks it up and, and receives the benefit. So these are just some of the things that as we think about God's work and the way that he is working in our midst, uh, it's easy to want to look around and say, well, we don't do this, or we're not doing that, or we're not like this, or we're not like that. That is, that to me, I say that, I know that means a lot, but that's really irrelevant. What matters is your attitude towards him based on you getting a hold of his attitude towards you. And you realizing it means something to him when we move out with his thinking. We challenge our thinking and we say, Lord, is this really the way you want me to think and respond? Or should I just continue to operate in my, my self-oriented way and and be close to the work that God wishes to do and bring me to a place of real peace and joy. That's where he's bringing you. <laughs> That's what he wants. And uh, so let me just review what I've, I've covered these last uh, three evenings. Uh, encouragement for dark days. We are being changed with an ever-increasing glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I uh, have a check about that. Let's go. Let me check that real quick. <clears throat> yeah, 
2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Okay, that's the first one. And then the second thing we, we have considered is God promises salvation, not the absence of danger. Um, Joshua 1 9, the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I'd like to just underline that word, wherever you go. I'm not necessarily saying wherever you go is always good. I'm just simply saying wherever you go, he's capable. And whatever it is that you need, he'll meet you there, but he'll leave in you. The next area that we consider. The oven of adversity transforms us. And again, just considering the, uh, the value of that with respect to Romans 8, 18, and the, the promise of God that it may be suffering for a period of time. It's always got a time limit, but there is a glory that can't be weighed, waiting for those that are willing to be transformed. Your job can transform you. God can use that to transform you. Your spouse can be used by God to transform you. We know this. Fellow believers can be used to transform you. Um, God may use uh, whatever he deems is best for us. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to slice the, the, the limits of where God can meet us and say, oh, you can't come to me that way. You can't deal with me that way. You know, the, the mark of genuine surrender and humility is to say, Lord, whatever is best, grant me the strength to stay, stay with it. I believe he honors prayers like that. And then finally, these last two, God is, is pointing us and directing us to his abounding grace. Remember that, please. You cannot exhaust the grace of God. He knows when we're taking advantage of it. And he'll deal with us as a wise father to wean us off of taking advantage of grace and letting grace humble us to the point where we say, I don't know how you can be so kind to me. But you are, and I thank you for that. And then, as we've just closed or finished up considering his mercies are new every day. His loyal compassion is renewed every day for us. Every day. Now, if I were to ask you this question, what do you think about those areas? And maybe, maybe you're, you would respond by saying, what do you mean, what do I think about those areas? I would, I would graciously ask, consider it in the light of, are those things that, that are attitudes you're seeking to implant in your thinking? Are you allowing God to implant those things in your thinking? That's where he gets, that's where he gets great coverage. That's where he gets great results. It's when we bank on him, we trust him, we let it go and say, Lord, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I trust you. But there's some responsible things we can do by imparting proper thinking that he hasn't forsaken us, he hasn't abandoned us, he's working, and he has made a promise. He who has begun a good work in you will perfect it unto the day of Christ Jesus. So I'd like to yield a little time I stole from you from the other nights and uh, hope you can go home uh, content in the Lord and thanking him for his word. That's the rock. This is the rock right here. Please be encouraged. I, I, as a fellow believer, I don't know everything here. I don't, I don't come here to listen to all, anything. I just want you to know that I sense the Lord's encouragement
Father, we thank you for your encouragement to us. How wonderful your son is. Father, we just have to say, when we get a good look at him, and we can just set aside our own ideas, and we can set aside our own plans and concepts about what we think you ought to do or how you're doing what you're doing, Father, we find such rest and peace. It gives us courage to be able to answer the unknown or the why that we, we, we have learned that you are, you are absolutely sterling in your character. There are no flaws in you. There are no weaknesses in you. We want to honor you tonight. We want to honor your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, by acknowledging and giving you thanks for what you have done and are doing. And we thank you, Father, that you are drawing your body close and near in this day. You're proving out and uh, helping the body to function uh, to its fullest capacity. How can we not thank you with all our being? And our Father, we pray that your hand will continue to give blessing and direction to us as your children, to each of the places that we fellowship in. May they be protected, Father, in this, this evil <coughs> day. We know the enemies of darkness hate this work. They hate it with everything. But Father, we want to thank you that we can be a 